Um, okay. So basically, uh, let me start off by saying that Pastor Jim is taking a few weeks to get his church in line, and uh, so he's stepped away from the show for a couple of weeks, and uh, you guys were kind enough to be guests on our show. So um, if we could all possibly introduce ourselves so that the viewers know who's speaking exactly. And let's start with uh, Joe Butler first, please. Yeah, uh, my name's Joe Butler, and uh, I've known Pastor Jim for many years. He's kind of a mentor to me. Uh, uh, I have a uh, YouTube channel called Bible with Joe, and I'm very excited to sort of fill in for him. And when you asked me about the topic, Jack, uh, creation versus evolutionism, uh, I said, let's get the expert on here. And uh, that is, of course, Dr. Kent Hovind. Um, I've watched his videos for years. He's a, a big inspiration to me. So I'm just stoked to be on this program uh, with you. So, uh, but I'm Joe Butler and uh, here in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm just glad to be here. All right. So forgive it if the internet's a little choppy, everybody who's watching, uh, you'll get the gist of it all. Just, just open your ears and listen. Um, and then uh, Dr. Kent Hovind, uh, welcome. It's an honor to have you on the show. I appreciate all your time's valuable. So we will try and get to this uh, right away and we'll get into questions as soon as you uh, let the viewers know exactly your background so they know how awesome and wonderful you are. All right. Well, thank you. It is an honor to be here. I'm not sure about the expert part. My mommy said an X is a has-been and a spurt is a drip under pressure. Um, I don't think I want to be a has-been. Anyway, but if, if tell Pastor Jim, if he can get his church in line in a couple of weeks, he'll be the first one in the history of the world. Most pastors, it takes a lifetime to try to get their church in line. Amen. <laughs> anyway, it's an honor to be here. My name is Kent Hovind. I taught high school science and math 15 years. I've been an ordained Baptist minister for 45 years, and uh, God has called me to do a ministry on creation versus evolutionism, and I like to put the ism on that, like communism, socialism, Marxism, Nazism. Evolution is one of the dumbest and most dangerous religions in the history of the world, and it needs to be exposed for what it is. And so I travel all over and speak. I speak in uh, Cornersville, or Crossville, Tennessee this weekend, uh, Sunday all day, and then set, uh, Friday, Sunday, Monday morning, and then come back home. But uh, I do seminars all over on creation versus evolutionism. We're building a Christian camp in Lenox, Alabama, population 35, uh, straight north of Pensacola, 70 miles. So you get a magnifying glass and see if you can find it on the map. But the dinosaur adventure land, it is amazing. Come on down and see what we're doing here. Okay, and then um, now you've been, uh, forgive me, I missed the fact, you've been an ordained minister for how long? 45 years, Baptist, my preacher. Wow. The independent. Independent, temperamental, fundamental, right-wing, radical, chicken-eating Baptist, the dangerous kind. Yep, I love it. So um, let, me, uh, let me just start by saying a lot of the people who watch our show are literally on the fence, lost completely. They have no clue on what they're thinking. They've never been introduced to God. They have no idea about the word or what some of their worldly beliefs are. So could you possibly define the differences between the two viewpoints well sure if you read the bible it says very clearly in the very first verse that god created the world god created the heaven and the earth i mean that's the first verse in the bible and then later if you read in exodus chapter 20 god wrote the ten commandments on a rock and handed them to moses one of them said about the sabbath about the sabbath day excuse me it says, in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is. So the Bible clearly teaches that God made It says it comes very clearly to about 6,000 years. Uh, it says Adam was 130 when Seth was born, and Seth was 105 when Enos was born. It's all in Genesis chapter 5. But if you add up the numbers found in the Bible, it couldn't be more clear. The Bible teaches the earth is not billions of years old. Instead, it adds up to about 6,000 years old. And so I defend the position that the Bible is exactly correct. God made everything, including dinosaurs, everything in six days. The evolution theory says uh, billions of things dying, slowly improving, brought man into the world. 
where the Bible teaches that it was man that brought death into the world instead of death that brought man into the world. These two worldviews could not be more polar opposite. Somebody is real seriously wrong, and I really enjoy showing them who they are. Don't you find it interesting that they say something's a million years old, and yet they have nothing to comp that's a million years old to compare it to? Well, see, those big numbers, the human brain cannot absorb those giant numbers. It gets lost, you know? People say, you know, Columbus or Abe Lincoln was president 160 years ago. That's like, that's a long time. 160 years is a long time. A lot can happen in 160 years. Yeah. Columbus was running around trying to find this place 500 years ago. That's a really long time, you know, 500 I, years. So when you talk about 6,000, it's like, oh, man, that's just at the limit of human comprehension. But yet they want to talk about billions of years, you know, tens of billions of years. This just simply is a propaganda technique to make you get lost in human minds that people say, oh, wow, it must be true. Hitler said, if you're going to tell a lie, tell a big one. People are more likely to believe a big lie than a small one. Oh, yeah. And the idea, oh, yeah. <laughs> the idea that everything in the universe fit into a dot that exploded and that we came from a rock, that is so stupid, beyond imagination stupid. Uh, but they believe it. Worse than that, it's, not, it's bad enough that they want to believe evolution. They want to teach it to all the kids. That's what becomes criminal, in my humble opinion. Yeah, that's almost as bad as teaching um, sexual nature topics to my children and all that. And I'm like, you know what? That belongs in the household. That belongs to the parents. We get to choose what our children learn in those areas. Stick to reading, writing, and arithmetic. So See, what this goes back to a different problem. Besides, actually, who do children belong to? If children belong to God and they're entrusted to parents, then yeah, parents get to decide. Right. But if evolution is true, there's no God, and there's so the majority decides right from wrong in the in the, the evolutionist mind. And so the majority of people say, hey, no, we want to teach them this. This is what they do in communist countries or in Nazi countries. The majority, you know, Hitler gets a majority of people following him and you eliminate the minority. This is a real serious topic. This evolution is a real serious topic. But go ahead, brother. I'm sorry. I didn't realize. So a lot of people say that the dinosaurs. Uh, you say there were dinosaurs. Where does that fall into the timeline? Because people well, think it's before people. The Bible says God made everything in six days. That's very clear. Exodus 20, 11. He wrote that on a rock with his finger. And he said it again in Exodus 31, 7. Mm -hmm. And it says in Matthew 5, 19, 4, that the creation of Adam was the beginning of the creation. Mark 10, 6 and Matthew 19, 4. So if the creation of Adam was the beginning then everything had to live at the same time, which is clearly what the Bible teaches if you read it. And before the flood came in the days of Noah, the Bible says the people lived to be 900 years old. You know, read Genesis chapter five. It's all right there. Adam was 930 when he died. Mm -hmm. Methuselah was 969. Noah was 950. So before the flood came, according to the Bible, the people lived to be 900 years old. And it's just a biological fact that reptiles and snakes and lizards, et cetera, never stop growing. Right. Humans stop growing at 16 or 18, at least vertically. Some go horizontally after that, but <laughs> reptiles never stop. Right. What right. would happen to a reptile if he could live to be 900? He'd be huge. That's the dinosaurs. Uh, Jack. Yeah. I, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Hoven, um, so uh, you say that the dinosaurs and man and all the animals were created at the same time, uh, that uh, they all uh, died in the flood except for Noah and his family and the animals on the ark. Um, why do we see so many dinosaur fossils, but we don't find uh, that many human fossils? Well, first, quite a few human fossils have been found. I mean, it's up into the hundreds, but I point out that um, <clears throat> if at the creation of the world, the world was full of animals, full of plants, and only two people. So it was not full of people. It only had two people. But the rest of the world's full of animals, full of plants. God made a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. Then, 1,600 years later, when the flood came, the world is still full of animals and still full of plants and still not full of people. So I don't know how many children they had and how, what the population was in the flood to drown. Let's say it was a billion. I don't know. It'd be, it'd be wildly guessing on our part. But 
as I point out, that there were probably a lot less people to drown than there were animals, number one. Number two, people are smarter than animals, at least some people. No. And so they would, be, they would find a way to avoid drowning until the last possible minute. You know, they would build a, build a raft or hang on to something. or they, they could find a way to avoid being destroyed in the first couple of days. Maybe they could survive for a week on floating log mat or floating uh, debris from the flood. And so any, any, the, the later they drowned in the flood, the less likely they are to be fossilized because they're going to end up on top and rot rather than buried and fossilized. Gotcha. Great. Good point. That's a great point. So how does it relate to the age of the universe to the age of Earth? Well, there's all kinds of different ways to tell, you know, how old is this universe or this or the world or depending on if you pick up a rock out of your driveway and say, how old is it? Well, they don't have a date on them. They don't talk. and You can't listen to it. They tell you. can't tell you. So we have to put our interpretation on it. Uh, the Bible dates clearly add up to about 6,000. And when you look at uh, the dating of, like, say, uh, a, a civilization, we dig we go look at the Egyptian pyramids. How old are they? I don't know. There's been a whole lot of research. I mean, tens of thousands of hours trying to figure out the answer to that question. And they come up with about 4,000 years old. Uh, some get bigger numbers, some get smaller numbers, because they, they, the further back you go in history, the more fuzzy it gets to try to get these numbers accurately. Um, but they don't even know for sure the date Jesus was born. It wasn't Christmas Day, that's for sure. And it wasn't the year zero. But <clears throat> I don't know. There's all kinds of scientific indicators that the Earth is not billions of years old. Uh, for example, uh, the moon is going around the Earth, but the moon is gradually getting further away from the Earth. We're losing the moon. It's leaving us about 1.6 inches a year. Wow. This is a pretty well established. Well, one. 1.6 inches a year is not a lot, but it's only 240,000 miles to the moon. And if you bring the moon back in closer, 1.6 inches every year for 5,000 years, ooh, this starts to become a problem, okay? Uh, if you want to go back 5 million years, now you really have a problem. You want to go back 50 million years, oh man, it's a problem because the closer the moon is, two things happen the tides are higher if the moon is closer. Right. Secondly, the gravity is stronger. So it's going to suck it in even more. The, the recession rate of the moon, if you plot it out on a graph, you'll find out it's not a straight line. It's a logarithmic curve. So the moon is leaving only 1.6 inches a year right now, but in the past it would have been more. Uh, so if they do all the math on this and say, look, the Earth-Moon system cannot be more than about one, one billion years old. One billion years ago, the Earth and Moon would have been too close together, and they would have snapped together like two magnets. Right. You know, if you get two magnets too close, all of a sudden they snap together because the, the mag magnetic pull is so strong. Right. So that's just one of about 100 scientific indicators. Hey, I'm sorry. This Earth is not 4.6 billion years old. That's for sure. Right. It can't even be 1 billion year old. So you're saying the Moon's so in my seminar going away. The moon's gradually pulling away. The moon away. is gradually moving away. It's called lunar recession. Go ahead. Oh, did I lose you? It's called the yeah. lunar recession problem. Uh, mm -hmm. The moon is moving away. I don't think anybody argues about that. It did, and it's memorable. So it means it's billions of years old. It's just that simple. Now, if they need billions of years for their theory, well, I'm sorry. Get a new theory. Yeah, I got uh, I got a question for you that one of our um, one of our viewers posed, <clears throat> and this is perfect for you for today. Um, is there a chance that that God created everything and the Big Bang theory happened at the same time? Meaning God used a Big Bang to create everything? Well, that's certainly not what the Bible says. Uh, right. I mean, you could say God spoke and bang, it was done, if you want to call that a big bang, but it was done. <laughs> it was created with perfect harmony. Big bangs create big messes. Right. Ask anybody who's been in a war battle, battle zone. I mean, big bangs do not create anything orderly. Right. And so uh, the, the, uh, there's no reason at all for us Christians to try to compromise our, our Bible with the stupid big bang theory. Right. Big Bang Theory. Big Bang Theory is not even a good theory. 
you at least have to have some evidence for a theory. We call it a theory. It's actually a religion. They believe it. Really? That's crazy. <laughs> so, so is it dangerous to be, it is dangerous to believe uh, toward the evolution side then to take that thought process? Um, what are the da- What do you say the dangers well, are? Why. Well, here's why I say it's dangerous. Let me ask you a question. How do you tell right from wrong? <sighs> By what my mom taught me, I guess. You know? There you go. You have somebody who gave you a standard and said, this is right, this is wrong, whether it's your mom or your dad or your teacher or somebody, okay? Right. How does an evolutionist, according to the evolution theory, how do we tell right from wrong? Is it wrong for the lion to eat the baby zebra? Well, I'm sure the zebra thinks it's wrong, but the lion thinks it's wonderful, right? Right. I was in a debate with an atheist one time, and I said, how do you tell right from wrong? If evolution is true, where's your standard? See, we have a standard, thus saith the Lord, thou shalt not, you know, etc. Where's your standard for right and wrong? And the atheist said, I decide what's right or wrong. He said, I'm the God of my own universe. I said, man, I'm glad to hear that because I'm going to shoot you in five minutes. I've done that. I've said that before. He said, said, you can't do that. I said, yeah, I can. I'm the God of my universe. I decided we ought to shoot you. Right. In your universe, shooting him is okay. (laughs) Exactly right. Is there a standard for right and wrong that everybody should follow? If not, we're in real trouble. I thank the Lord. That's why the theory is. That's one reason the theory is dangerous. It removes any absolute standard for morality or right and wrong. Every man becomes God in his own eyes. Plus, there's absolutely no evidence for it. Evolution is purely anti-scientific. There is no science evidence for evolution. Nobody's ever seen a dog produce a non-dog, period. It's never been seen. Well, it's it's interesting because, you know, if there was evolution, we should have found fossils that showed every stage of evolution and we have not. We've not filled in the gaps of what they're making up. Well, it's worse than that. No fossils would count at all. When you find fossils in the dirt, all you really could prove is it died. You can't prove it had any kids at all. Right. And you can't prove it had kids that were different. And you can't prove it's intermediate between anything. Is a tricycle intermediate between a bicycle and a four-wheeler? No, a tricycle is designed to be a tricycle. It did not come from a bicycle. It was designed from the ground up as a tricycle. It was designed. So no fossils are going to count as evidence for evolution. You right. can't prove it had any children. You can't prove it had any children that were different. You can't prove it had any, any children that lived. Plus, why would you think a bone in the dirt could do something no animal today can do? No farmer in the history of the world has ever seen or reported that their plants or animals, whatever they're raising, produce something other than the same kind. Cows produce cows, corn produces corn. There is no example out there of anything other than that. So turning to fossils is a sign of pure desperation. You don't know those bones had any kids at all. Fossils don't count at all for evolution, not at all. Right. 